Hi, I'm Kyle Nelson, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Happy here with us, thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenbaugh, with me today as always, our co-hosts, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing great. Hi everybody, how are you Jake? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. What do we have for today? Today's special guest is an actress and has done voiceover for a number of radio and TV commercials. But most of you, if not all of you, will know her as the voice of BJ on Barney and Friends from his debut in 1993 until 2010. In other words, our BJ of our childhood. Please welcome <laughs> Patty Wirtz. Welcome, Patty. Happy to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, we're, we're delighted. Pleasure. We're delighted to have you. Uh, so, yes. So, Yes. So to kick this off, uh, could you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes. Um, I am a voice actor. I started out as a stage actress. And then when I was in my mid-30s, I guess it was, I made the transition to doing voiceover work. And I had been doing that. I had actually been doing both stage work and voiceover work for a while, but I made the transition um, into doing voiceover work full time. And then about a year after I'd done that, I um, got the role of BJ on Barney. And that led to a long, very long gig. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your background like and how did you grow up? I am originally from Manhattan, Kansas. We call it the Little Apple. And um, if any of you are familiar with the show, oh, is it somebody somewhere that uh, Bridget Everett is doing? That is the same town. We both grew up in Manhattan, Kansas. And uh, so I grew up there. My dad was a professor uh, in electrical engineering at the university that's in Manhattan, Kansas State. And I had an interest. I'm, I'm the youngest of six kids. So, of course, you know, the baby having to entertain and be the center of attention. <laughs> uh, I really started enjoying doing plays when I was in grade school, you know, when they would have tryouts for skits and things like that. And I even wrote some little plays and the teachers were so lovely and indulgent. They would they would let me cast them and put them on with friends. So they're at school and we put them on for um, our classmates. So anyway, I went on and did summer theater a lot and then got a degree in theater from Kansas State and really worked as primarily a stage actress for the beginning of my career and then eventually transitioned into voiceover work. But for the first part of my career, until I was in my mid-30s, I was primarily a stage actress, did almost all my work live on stage. Definitely. And um, so I'm kind of curious, did you like always want to be an actor? Like, how did you like, like, what made you want to get into acting? I, I did. From the time I was very young, I would say probably from the time I was, um, I want to say 10 or 11, I probably I knew that I probably wanted to be an actor. There was a little bit of time there when I thought about going to vet school, um, but that kind of went by the wayside. And I'd say from the time I was really young, I had the desire to do it professionally and sort of pursued that path from the time I was in grade school and junior high, figuring that that's what I wanted to do. And so it came about at an early age and I think it was just the joy of being creative, you know, making making up stories. I did a little bit of writing too. And then you know, the arts were always very important to me. We had music classes and I took speech class in high school and everything. And that is where my greatest source of joy was. 
So I, I knew I wanted to pursue that for a living just because it was so much fun. And when I started doing plays, particularly in high school and college, I knew I'd found my people. <laughs> so that helped too. Nice. Very nice. So I'm curious, do you remember what your first professional voiceover job was? I'd have to, I have to think back. This was probably when I was doing dinner theater in Wichita, Kansas, there was a spot that came up for this place called, I think it was called Buttonwood Tree Apartments. And I did a voiceover for that. And that was way back when I was probably 20 or 21. <laughs> so that's been years ago. The technology was much, much, much different then. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, so kind of like what was the uh, whole audition process like of uh, getting BJ? It was really interesting. And um, it was, talk about serendipity. Um, my I was with an agent at the time. Her name was Yvette Stone. And she called to say that um, they were auditioning for the role of an eight-year-old boy dinosaur for this show, Barney. And I was not familiar with Barney at the time. Right. Cause it was still the PBS series at least was still fairly new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at that time. I, yeah. I joined about the third season. So this was um, yeah. er, very early on and I was not familiar with it, but when my agent called and said they're auditioning for the voice of a boy dinosaur, I thought, well, who knows what that sounds like? Might as well go for it. Yeah. So um, I went over to Allen, drove over to Allen, Texas, and walked in. And at the time, they were shooting at Lyric Studios, which was right there also in Allen. And it was also the site of a big printing publishing company. So I walked in and there was a, a great big lunch break room that was full of people. And I waited and waited for my audition. And I was the last one that they saw that day. They had already been auditioning for BJ and they hadn't found what they wanted. So this was a, a second set of auditions that they were having. And so I walked in and I was the last one. And uh, Jim Rowley and Dennis DeShazer are the people who um, auditioned me for the role. And they were just as nice as they could be. And the, the thing I talk about serendipity that was so weird was probably a year before I had sent out some demos of just my voiceover work to various places. And one of the places I sent it to was RCL, was the publishing company, because I knew they did in-house videos, you know, for some of their uh, employees and things like that. So I thought, well, might as well have sent him a copy of my demo. And Dennis pulls out my demo that I had sent to the other company and said, there's a spot on here that you did that so kind of sounds like what we're looking for. And so uh, the audition went on from there and they had me, we talked, they had me do some reading, they gave me direction. We continued and went back and forth a few more times. And then um, they had me sing happy birthday because I wanted to make sure I could sing. Uh -huh. Of course, <laughs> of course. That's wonderful, and yeah. if it's funny enough that um that you actually already met Julie Johnson when yes. you first set up stage actress, and you both already were really good friends. So it's you know kind of full circle moment that you both you know are, oh, are, you know for Barney, you know. Yes, it here. was that was such a joy because at the time that Julie auditioned, um, and when in she was we were doing a show together right before she got baby bop or and she, we were doing a show together when she auditioned for baby bop we were doing a production of nonsense uh, at cosmignana over in fort worth texas so we'd been doing this production together the show ran for nine months and we'd been doing it for a long time and julie had this wonderful little character voice that she was doing as playing one of the nuns and she incorporated that into her baby bop voice <laughs> oh wow interesting oh that's cool yeah nice. so we were good friends we'd known each other for a long time by the time i came along and auditioned for bj that's awesome yeah it was nice to have somebody i knew on the set yeah of course, of course. Yeah. exactly of course so 
Barney was already kind of a big deal when BJ was introduced in 93, but it grew hugely. When you started as BJ, did you have any idea that Barney would be such as big of a sensation as it is now? I did not. It was on its way, like you said, it had already really started to grow. But I think it was hard for any of us to envision how big it was going to become. Oh, it yeah. was just kind of like, hang on for the ride. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> but it was yeah. amazing to watch that and be a part of that. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, starting with the Boy and Friends series, are there any episodes BJ was in that kind of like stick out as some of your favorites? Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Yes, there are a couple that have come to mind over the years that I look back on really fondly. Um, one of them is an episode that was a rock and roll star kind of episode. I don't remember, know if you guys remember the song Rock and Roll Star. Yeah, uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that yeah. was, we did use that in several shows. And so I recorded it yeah. several times. You know, we pre-recorded all the music. When we and then we were you know, live on set when we would do the show. Mm -hmm. Are are you guys familiar with the way that the production was done? Yeah, I've, like I've seen someone because like I've yeah. seen uh, Carrie yeah. talk about it on yes. his uh, podcast, yes. and he's kind of talked a lot about you know the production side of things and you know recording and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah Carrie has a different perspective than, than I do. Right, because yeah. he's in the body. Right. inside that costume. Right. I mean, and other people, like, you know, Bob West. and Yes, they, um, we always laugh and say the bodies, of course, they had the hard job, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. But I think back on, the, on some of those favorite episodes, one of them was a rock and roll star one, but it was kind of a, it was a Little Red Rocking Hood, I think was the name of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, and that's a good one. Julie as Baby Bop was, I mean, it was the country singer and the rock and roll singer, which was BJ. And so they kind of had a sing-off thing. And some of the girls on the set did, you know, they were a girls group and a trio and they sang. It was just really fun. That was a really fun episode. The back and forth and the music was great. And then there was another one that was just a really beautiful episode where, and I don't remember the name of it, but BJ played the Emperor of China in it. There was a fairy tale that went along and BJ played the Emperor of China. And I just remember the production values on that were so beautiful. And it was fun because he got to do something that was a little bit more adult. Oh, huh. wow. I think mm. I remember that. Yeah, one of my favorite episodes, I think it was from season seven. It's called uh, BJ's Really Cool House. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that was a yes. fun one. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. And, um, and one of That's the <laughs> fire enough before we actually uh, taping um the episode I actually did watch um was one of the season three episodes of Hats Off to BJ. Uh huh. Oh yeah, it's a great one. We're uh, were there all so different hats? BJ was the same. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do y'all remember one where BJ? I can't remember. If Baby Bob was trying to find some shoes. Oh, 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 um, at the shoe fits. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, she was up in the treehouse throwing shoes out the yeah. window. <laughs> Jeff airs yeah. in that costume. The combination wow. of Julie and Jeff, I will say that between them, and then of course, Jeff Brooks, and then later Kyle, we laughed so hard on that set constantly, all day long. It was. You know, I did the show for 18 years and I was not tired of going to work. I still loved going to work every day. It was, that's great. Oh, it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had mute buttons so we could talk to one another without being heard on the set, which led to a lot of um, times of the director saying, voices. <laughs> 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 But we had a great time. Oh. Yes, Kyle, he's he's grand. No, Kyle, I love Kyle. Yeah, that was wonderful. A previous guest. He yeah, he's a previous guest. We've had him on twice, and yeah, yeah he, he's just wonderful. That's he. Wonderful I. You can see what energy and joy he exudes. Oh yeah. 
Right. And uh, so yeah. to be able to work with him, Dino Sync, you know, like that and yeah. to and his energy and his sense of fun. And also he was fearless. Mm-hmm. He would do, you know, skateboard or ride a bike or whatever he had to do in that costume, he would do it. And I was amazed at the things he was able to do and do well. He's naturally athletic. So I think that helps a lot. <laughs> yes, and, yeah, there, oh, he's, he's wonderful. There's there's one episode I just thought of also from season three. Uh, it's an episode called On the Move. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yes. Love such that a one. Great that was episode. a great one. We're Derek, we, with my memory on that. I mean, that was uh, a yeah, Derek and it's, Tina uh, return. Derek and Tina return, oh, and there's yes. a there's this new boy who moves in. What's his name? Kenneth. Yeah, yeah. Kenneth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah. He had moved in oh. to the neighborhood, and uh, it's just just a wonderful episode. Yeah. There were so many great ones. Another one that I loved. There was a, you guys might remember. I think this was actually a home video. There were a couple of home videos that stood out. And mm-hmm. there was a, it was a Halloween home video. Yeah, um, Barney's, Barney's Halloween. Halloween. Barney's Plaza. Halloween. Yes. Party. It's a great, great. one. Yes. Love that. So yes. great. We Love had so one. much fun with that. The whole idea of BJ trying to get out there and trick or treat and then ending up with nothing but a stick of celery at the end. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's funny, funny enough that I, I'm you both, you and and uh, Julie, we actually did a, little, did a little cameo on that yes. video. We Not had some, like a, a background with... people. Like Actually, sharing. I think Julie was there. I don't think I was there that day. That was when they had the Halloween party. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't think I was there for that. But <laughs> um, maybe I was. I don't remember. There are so, <laughs> so many episodes and moments. Right. I'd have to go back and actually watch it again. Mm-hmm. But that was a lot of fun. And also another home video that I just loved doing was the one where we went to the zoo in Fort Worth. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, let's go to the zoo. Oh, yes. yeah, that was a good one. Yes, that was a great one. So much fun because we got to go be at the zoo shooting before it opened in the morning. And then, you know, we're there later in the evening too. So it was just wonderful to be able to experience that and walk around and uh, be in that atmosphere. Plus there was a whole scene with, you know, BJ going to the elephant cage and, getting uh, a snout full of a trunk full of water sprayed on him by the elephant and things like that. So there were a lot of great moments in that, but it was also wonderful just to be at the Fort Worth zoo. Cause it's so beautiful. Yeah, We had a great time doing that one too. Definitely. Absolutely. There's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of amazing home videos. Um, gosh, uh, Barney's fun games. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, uh, uh, one, two, three, four seasons. Yes. Oh, yes. That was one, early two. on. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. I'm um, a uh, sensational day where mm-hmm. one point where BJ was dressed up as, as Captain Pickles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can be anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember. Yes, I think. Oh, and the uh, Let's fun. Play School. Yeah. That was, that was, play that was always my favorite one, my... one growing up. Yeah. Same uh, here. That's, too. that's one Love of my that favorites. Video. That. That and Barney's Night Before Christmas. Both I was going to I was just match. thinking of that. You must Holiday have read my brain waves. Yeah, and and Barney's that. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Barney's Christmas Star too. Yes. Yeah. They were so those were really fun to shoot because the whole festive atmosphere and just the beautiful sets. Mm-hmm. I can't remember which of the two Christmas videos was the one where BJ couldn't keep up with the assembly line trying to get the presents wrapped. I might have been night before Christmas. I, might, I think, yeah. I, I think uh-huh. it was night before Christmas, I think. Yeah. yeah. But those were always fun to be a part of, too. And then to, you know, watch over Christmas and be a part of somebody's Christmas holiday. That was nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So in terms of, like, the the musical aspect, what are some of your favorite uh, songs that BJ got to sing? Well, of course, I already mentioned Rock and Roll Star. That yeah, was, of course. That was yes. a tough one to sing. But oh, I, I was really going to always that. loved doing that one. And um, gosh, yeah, because I know Walk and Wall Star, it was like the most, the kind of most challenging, yeah, song that BJ's oh, yeah. got to done. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and then I'm when BJ, wondering, like... I was just gonna say, I think when BJ debuted, there was also a BJ song. I yes. was just gonna mention that, that, they, yes. did, that they did a couple that of times, yes. yeah, that was a fun one too. Yeah, I like that. And flying in it, flying in an airplane, oh, yeah, you sing oh, that yes. one a lot, of yeah, course, of course. Yeah. Yes. 
That's Love right. that. Yeah. Those yeah. were some of my favorites of his, but Rock and Roll Star definitely was the top one. And um, the BJ song, of course, yeah. because it was, it was written for him. And they initially, I don't know if you remember early episodes before BJ would come on, there would be a whistle. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. whistle. yes. Yes. They I eventually cut that, but well. I always thought that was kind of a cute yeah. Yeah, part of so his personality. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, some definitely uh, s'mores. Mm -hmm. S'mores, yeah, that was a fun uh, one. Uh, uh, the popcorn song. The popcorn, oh, popcorn song. song. Yeah. Talk about a song that can get stuck in your head. <laughs> yeah. I know. And of yeah, course, I mean so the real too. classics. Like anytime they did like Mr. Knickerbocker or one of those, yes. like that, it's just a classic. Yes. And I still want you know we'll get the turn off the water while you're washing your hands or brushing your teeth you know we, yeah. we never let the oh, water yeah. run never let the water yeah, run yeah right that one in the cleanup so song and oh, yeah. Yeah, mr knickerbocker there were oh, we had so many talented musicians bob singleton oh, you know bob. working on the show um just so many wonderful people so much ta talent and people who loved their work that was mm -hmm. made it you know, a pleasure. And like I said, we would go in and pre-record the music. So we had the freedom to play around with things a little bit in the studio. And um, it was also nice not to have to sing and re-sing on the set because it would have been really hard on us vocally. So it worked out really well to be able to go in and and have some creativity while we were in the studio. And then we could always add little ad-libs and things like that during the actual shoot. But to have the majority of the music was already all done. Definitely, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And the, and the dino dance. <laughs> oh, the dino dance. Yeah, yes. That, oh, my that gosh. was done a lot, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. We love the dino dance. That was one you could really have a lot of fun with. And we did that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was yeah. great. And I, I'm sure that um, Carrie and Kyle and <laughs> those guys have their own feeling about the dino dance yeah, doing it over and over sure. again but it it was really fun uh yeah the first time it was done i remember was in the coming over to barney's house video and i mm -hmm. thought that oh, was yeah. wonderful too yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah some really pretty music too they're on some of the albums uh listen to the nighttime I always oh, yeah. thought it was a really yeah, beautiful yeah. song. It's a good one. Yes. Yeah, really soft and soothing and pretty. Mm -hmm. um, the albums were fun to do too, because again, we were usually doing some of our stuff in parts, but then we could get together and work on things too. So there was that energy of us combined, which was nice. I always loved working with, with whether it was Dean or whether it was Bob and Julie, it was so much fun to be able to play off of each other when we were in a group setting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, BJ was also in, you know, of course, you know, many of the home videos, but the first one was actually being Imagination Island. What's it like getting to work on that? That was exciting because that was the first time, I believe, that we worked at Las Colinas, which was a big sound studio. So we had been um, shooting in Allen, mm -hmm. which uh, was where Lyric Studios was. And we were in, in much smaller quarters then. So the sets were much smaller and the voice talent was kind of back behind where the lighting guys were, just behind a curtain with our microphones and that kind of thing. So it was a much you know, smaller feel to it. And then when we got to Las Colinas, we were actually on a big sound stage, and they had you know the wonderful ship and all the the big sets that went with it that were really exciting, and the voice talent they made individual booths for us that were portable, so they could roll those out and have them be just off to the side of the set. So for the first time, we were really kind of out there with everybody else, and. You know, we had our, our soundproof booths, but we could actually step out of them and come and look at the set and interact with people and not be quite so isolated. So that was that was nice. And that was exciting to be a part of that. That was a great video. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was exciting because that was a network video. That was actually yes, that's right. that was, TV. Was a TV yeah. special originally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I saw yeah. that video. Yes. So it's, it's a classic. So uh, Absolute classic. So BJ was also in the 10th anniversary video. 
another mm-hmm. one that goes back with my childhood sing and dance with barney mm-hmm. where some of the original child cast returned um what was it like doing that particular video because that that was really special i mean 10 years that's a big deal especially yeah. for barney well for for one thing it was almost kind of unreal because th- there had been a long time since i'd seen some of those kids and to have them walk in and be so grown up it was kind of mind-blowing uh but it was very sweet and it was wonderful to see those kids again and see how well they were doing how they'd grown as people and as performers um leah gloria actually when i worked at casa manana she was a student there as a little girl and uh to see leah uh and some of the other people that were there it was it was really a treat and very sentimental, you know, to see those kids and see how well they were doing. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's wonderful. Absolutely. And, and and to those who are wondering who is Aaliyah Garcia, that's that's Lucy, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, Lucy. Leah Gloria. Mm-hmm. Hey, Leah yeah. Gloria, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you also got to uh, voice BJ for the theatrical film, Barney's Great Adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, can, can you share any stories from getting to work on that? Oh my gosh, that was an adventure. <laughs> it, was, it was very, very different from our normal production experience because we had gone from being on a set to actually being on location. We shot the the movie in Canada. And so that was interesting um, because I think I was in Montreal for four weeks, maybe a little longer. And we had a lot of night shoots which I had never done before. So that was interesting. We had um, the majority of the shots that BJ was in were set on a farm and we had a barn there and there was also a farmhouse. So there were a lot of exteriors and then there were interiors and exterior shots of the barn, but very different working conditions. Um, one of the biggest things was that we couldn't have our voiceover booths, but they still had to record us. And so what they did was there was an old, um, a different barn that was much smaller, but it had stalls in it for the horses that were still there. And they took sound blankets and hung those where the stalls were. So each of us had our own stall (laughs) and we were in there at night and it was very cold i remember that but we were each in our little stalls and we had our microphones and everything in there and our headsets and they had the sound set up so that we could record and had the sound blankets so that the sound quality would be decent enough you know to get by and i'm sure we went back probably and re-recorded some of that afterwards but it was interesting to be recording kind of on location like that and at night yeah, I know because uh, I remember when we interviewed uh, Josh Martin, he talked about how when when you guys were off filming the movie that um, some people like him and Duncan Brandon and other people came to like fill in for your characters in the show. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they had so much going on, you know, trying to do production and then do the film at the same time that they had to really spread out the talent because, you know, we had a whole crew of people who went out on all the live concert tours Mm -hmm. and so all the guys who were in the bodies for that we always pre-recorded everything for the live tours all the music and the dialogue was Mm -hmm. pre-recorded and then they would send somebody somebody along say for barney in case anything went amiss or whatever and they needed somebody to cover that but and they had you know backups for it but yeah, there were times when there were ca- a couple different people doing Barney in different locations. So uh, I know a lot of uh, Barney fans are kind of wondering, um, is it fine if we can hear a bit of BJ? Oh, yeah, you can hear BJ. That'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great uh, to see you guys. Do you see uh, what I have to do with my face? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing, BJ? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, we're wonderful. We're doing wonderful. Oh, that's terrific. I'm so glad to hear that, and I'm glad to be here today. Absolutely. Aww. How's how's uh, Baby Bop? Uh, annoying, but fun. 
Oh, that's awesome. That's great. You know, it's so funny. It comes back like that when you've done something for that long. But um, my husband used to just say, I did, just don't do it in front of me, right? <laughs> <laughs> but occasionally uh -huh. DJ would tell him how to drive while we were in the car. You know? <laughs> I love that. That's great. Oh, damn. I love <laughs> Oh, wow. I love that. Backseat driver. Yeah. That's one thing yeah. I've never really thought of, you know, BJ telling you how to no. drive. That's yeah. funny. Right. That's you hilarious. know, they have, I for, I forget what app it is. I know they have like, uh, Voices. I think it's, it's Waze. Yeah. Yeah. Waze. Waze. That's what it is. I couldn't, I couldn't remember what it was. And now I took a just... trip with the voice of Boy George on my, on oh, my did you oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I think that we should campaign for BJ to be on there. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. 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 That'd be so fun. Yeah. <laughs> Railroad crossing <laughs> approaching. I like it. Oh, man. Uh, so uh, I have to show you guys, I because I'm seeing the toys there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show you a couple of things because I know you're sure. probably aficionados with this. Have you guys seen this before? Let me see if I can. Oh, yeah. It. Is that the yeah. uh, chase pillow? I think it so. It is. I, I didn't know if anybody really. else but me had seen these or had one <laughs> because I have some bizarre stuff, you know, that's not so run of the mill. But anyway, yeah, because I, I think I've seen the Barney one. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And then we've got BJ in his pajamas and oh, um, yeah. the talking BJ. And yeah. Although the batteries have all gone bad on those, I don't think they mm. work anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. No, that's that's what happens with those old toys. They just don't work anymore. And it's just I know. Uh, yeah. oh, but me can just still, you know, just make it all <laughs> yeah. you just make it, it. all work. Fill just in like that. If you need, you know, <laughs> right, if you yeah. your, to do <laughs> your toy talk again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. This is BJ counting one, two, three. I don't think he worked no, not even a whisper anymore. But uh. it's been what, probably twenty years maybe since since some of those toys even came out. Wow. That's wow. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is crazy. So one of the other home videos that you did was The Land of Make-Believe, which was yes. filmed on location at Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. You had even you mentioned the Fort Worth one earlier with Let's Go to the Zoo, but what was it like being at Universal Studios? It was pretty magical. It was very cool. Um, we were there for quite some time and using different locations in the park that were just beautiful to begin with. And then the people who, you know, dressed the set and Bob Valley, Bob LaValley with his set design that he had done, you know, throughout production for the show, you know, was incredible to work with to begin with. And then Elizabeth Belton would come on and dress the sets with all these wonderful props and things. And it was just gorgeous. That was one thing that stuck in my mind. The other thing was that it was so much fun being able to be in, a, in an amusement park before they opened up <laughs> and kind of have the run of the place when we weren't shooting. It'd be like, come on, let's go ride a ride. And then we'd come back. But uh, it was hot. I do remember that. We were pretty hot, too. <laughs> we kind of tortured the guys on the set during that Universal <laughs> shoot because they were out. We're <laughs> in Florida. They're in the suits, and it's so hot. And, you know, here are the voices sitting by the craft services table because they had us set up not far from the craft services table. Right. So there's mm -hmm. all these delicious snacks and, you know, we would lean over and whisper into our mic so that the bodies could hear us. Julie, when you go by there, could you maybe get me one more of those donut holes and maybe another Coke? <laughs> <laughs> and here are the guys being able to maybe get a sip of water every, you know, half an hour or something, but yeah, they let us know afterwards. Uh, occasionally, uh, Carrie would come in and, and do a body slam against Dean with the Barney suit on oh, if he wow. tortured him too much while we were on the set. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a beautiful place to shoot. And I can look around my room here. After we shot that video, 
they had a sale and sold a lot of the props. There were some gorgeous things and you can believe I went in and I still see things that I bought here to this day. Um, some beautiful set, things that were on the wizard set for that show. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah. But that was a pretty wonderful shoot. We had a good time. And it was a, it was really, I think we did jungle adventure, going on a jungle adventure in mm -hmm. that yeah. video. And I remember it was beautiful among all the greenery and everything um, to be able to have that through line with them traveling through the jungle. And of course they're, well, there's the Jurassic Park stuff that goes on there too. So you can imagine the dinosaurs had fun with that too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a beautiful, um, a beautiful shoot. The other thing that was really wonderful, and I think about it now because we're getting close to Christmas time, makes me think of Radio City and the Rockettes and stuff. Oh, the yeah. shoot, uh, or being on at Radio City Live was really, really special. Yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tour. I I have it on I have it on video. I just absolutely love oh. Arnie Live in New York City. Yeah. Oh, Wonderful. that was. I had not been with the show for very long when that right. happened. And I look back on that as the time when BJ really that character kind of really came together for me and gelled because I was used to performing live. And how you have to really be in the moment, right? You have to be right there and focused so much when you're performing live that BJ just started to become, I had been concentrating so hard on how to develop the voice and make it consistent. But then in that moment of shooting live or not shooting live, but being live and really having to be in the moment, BJ just came together in a way for me that he hadn't before. So that was really a joy for me to experience that besides just being in Radio City Music Hall and getting to perform there and spend time in New York, which was wonderful. But the voices, we were actually in the basement of Radio City. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. I remember hearing yeah, about that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, it's, it's interesting. I was in New York like a year ago because uh, uh -huh. I went to see uh, Sesame Street, the musical, which was had its original run at the time and it was it was my first time in new york i was really, oh, really? excited about it yeah i was really excited about it and i saw i saw radio city and i and i i know a friend of mine who had the same reaction we went separately of course but we were both like ah barney performed here that's the <laughs> only thing that's the only thing we cared about was that barney performed barney there he was there it, yeah. well, it was special. And I remember it was so exciting because all of our performances were sold out. Oh, and yeah. There were so many little kiddos there that were having the time of their lives because oh, yeah. there was a camera set up or they, I guess maybe so they could shoot the audience too and see kids reactions. So we actually got to see that as they were editing it and things where you could see these kids faces just light up and just be totally mesmerized by Barney, you know, coming on and the characters and everything. But so that was really fun. But it was interesting that we were in the basement and that's where our booths were. So when I say I played Radio City, I played it, but I played it from the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Live in New York City is such wonderful, wonderful shows. Yes. So yes. great. Yeah. Love, love, the, love the, Love the video. Oh yeah, so yeah. great. We well, had such well, a fun favorite. time there. Yeah, because it's we stayed one of my in favorite. a beautiful hotel. It was gorgeous, and it was you know, it was just a magical time. It really was. It's crazy how fast yeah. tickets sold out too. Because I think I saw a newspaper yeah. article. I think it was from December of ninety three. I don't remember how long it took, but it it did not take long for twelve shows to sell out at Radio City. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'll, I'll define it here uh but it was just mind-blowing like all 12 shows sold out like, in new york and we were amazed by that I think that's one of the times where you kind of sat back and went wow this is really this is a huge phenomenon i mean they the numbers don't lie right uh to just realize that the tickets had sold out and sold out so fast and then to see as we were coming in 
you know, for our call time and going in the back to see all the lines of people waiting to come in. That was pretty amazing as well. Definitely. One of my uh, yeah. favorite, one of my favorite uh, Barney tours that you did, which we talked a lot about with uh, Kyle when we had him on, was uh, Barney's Big Surprise. Uh huh. That was a real fun one. Oh, that was like gosh. BJ's yeah. uh, birthday. Yes. Tour. Yes. Yes, and that was actually like very first tour, mm -hmm. which kind of involves you know BJ's birthday. I know. Yes. You know, I know. Yeah. I know. In that time, you were like, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> the first Barney tour focused on BJ's birthday. I think it's BJ. Yeah, yeah because yeah. when I auditioned right. in the first season that I did, BJ was just in five episodes. And they didn't know if his character would stay, if he would be a regular character, you know, if there would be something. So to watch that grow and to him become more, you know, of an integral part of the show was was very exciting too. And to have a plot that centered around his birthday was pretty great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Big surprise. Yeah, Live in New York City, such wonderful, wonderful concert videos. Yes, going back to Live in New York City real quick, because I actually remember where um uh we see live we see music hall that concert video in general was also aired too mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and and pbs pbs yeah, yeah. was it pbs yeah yeah yeah, yeah and, uh, and then uh imagination island was on nbc how yes. you know that mm -hmm. uh but but i think i oh, think live in new york city aired on pbs yeah yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah, that was, it was also really interesting to, for rehearsals, you know, to spend time out in the house and watch the show come together with the Winkster, you know, appearing oh, yeah. in different David places Bosch, and watching how they did that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. It was fun to be able to just be able to sit back when they were rehearsing other scenes that we weren't in and watch how the production was building and taking place. And the fact that we had a live elephant on stage. Oh yeah, right was amazing <laughs> that guy you know back you just on your way to work and we're going down to the voice booth and you looked over and there's an elephant <laughs> so uh it wasn't the only time when we had pretty amazing animals on the set but that was an elephant really did stand out that was pretty incredible and there was another home video that we did that was about uh a circus Circus, yes, that's it. Yes, great one too. She was oh, so yeah. I used to be able to go over and feed her some. You know, she was over standing over the side, and her her wrangler, her trainer, the man who owned her, was really wonderful, and um, she was very sweet. And we could go over and and feed her and interact with her a little bit and stuff when we weren't on set. That's great. I, as I recall, BJ actually got to ride on her, which I was a little jealous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. But oh, yeah. BJ yeah. got to do some pretty amazing things. You know, oh, Kyle yeah. did in terms oh, yeah. of yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. So now in 2021, we lost the late Ophelia Cesario, who plays Stella, the storyteller. Can you share any memories from getting to work with her? Oh, she was a lovely person. Phyllis was so sweet and always so high energy and just a sense of fun. You know, she would she would come on set and be ready to work and just, you know, talk about having fun with people and being able to laugh. And, and she just brought a lot of joy in with her when she worked. And that's what I think I remember about her most is her energy, her energy and her joy and just her, um, enthusiasm that she brought to that character. She really made Stella her own. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, she's a um, sweetheart. Yeah. Whenever like she like first came to this set, the kids we were like, Stella. Like, <laughs> yes. And, yeah, she has yeah. a, and she has a little door. Yes. Transition. Yes. That she would make that appearance up, through. Yeah, appearance, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Entrance, yeah. yeah. She was wonderful. And that character was so much fun. Mm -hmm. You know, taking kids all around the world and expanding the show that way. I thought it was a great idea for a character. And then she just brought it to life so beautifully. Yeah. Some of the videos, yes, she really was. Um, yeah. Some mm -hmm. of the videos mm -hmm. I remember that she was a part of is, of course, definitely, you know, what a world we share. Yeah. And um, uh, once upon once upon a time, yeah. yeah. Once upon a time, yeah. Oh 
Oh yeah, and as well as uh, the best of Barney too. Yeah, where she best came back. Best of Barney. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one for Which the twentieth. That was that was for the twentieth anniversary oh, in two thousand eight. Okay. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. I had forgotten about that. Yeah, one. where wow. Mr. Boy That's was nice. also there too. Yes, mm-hmm. he oh, was a yeah. joy to work with as well. We had some oh, great Robert. people who became, you know, regular characters who would come on. Um, Mr. Boyd was one of them. Uh, Stella, of course, was one of them. I, you guys probably remember when we had Miss Etta. Oh, and Miss Ed, Scooter, 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 Scooter McNetti, yes. 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 Both of them were so sweet. And Bryce, yeah. who played uh, Miss Etta, was just a delightful human being as well. And we lost him a number of years ago, too. But yeah. uh, they were such a funny team mm-hmm. and and uh, played off of each other so well. But great characters. You know, Miss Etta was just such a fun character and Scooter, too. Yes. yes. It's really cool that mm. um the season four through six era kind of did have some chances about having some like kind of a you know puppetry you know characters yes, yes. There, which yes. which I was pretty cool yes oh uh, yeah they they also had I don't know if you remember but they also had for a brief time a character I don't know if you remember Booker T Bookworm by any chance yes Earl yeah with Earl Fisher oh yes which you yes. also did some like. A voiceover for later wasn't wasn't, too. wasn't seen very often, which was a shame. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he also he appeared. Great. Yeah. Um. Uh. Gosh. Um. Uh. uh it's time. Uh, some, it's time to. It's time for it's counting. Time for right again. on cue, Jake. Thank you. Right on cue. Thank you. <laughs> He's got it there. I have it right Perfect. here. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's great. Also, I don't know if you all remember Carol Farabee playing the Queen of Hearts. Mm-hmm. In the Valentine's Day video, yeah. Did. She, oh, no. yeah. Yes. yes, that's right. She was a stage actress yes. and who I had worked with previously too, and had known for years. And it was so much fun having her on the set. In fact, when we went to Radio City, Carol, they wanted to make sure we had understudies for the voices, and so Carol came along and was understudy for both BJ and Baby Bob in case something happened to either Julie or I and we couldn't perform. So Carol could do both of the voices. And so she came along with us and understudied both the voices and then later went on to do um, the Queen of Hearts in the Valentine video. Right. And she's a wonderful performer and um, yes. you know, voiceover as well as, as live theater and a singer too. So <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so going back to Universal for a little bit, mm-hmm. Barney had also had his own attraction, A Day in the Park with Barney, uh, way back then. Uh, yes. What did you enjoy most about that? I think probably what was fun about that was it was it was a smaller venue instead of being a great big auditorium. So it was done in the round, and so the audience was seated all around it. And Barney could come out and be in the center. And I think it was wonderful because of the close proximity. It was a more intimate venue so that the kids could really be closer to Barney. And it was the whole 360 degree thing. And they could make their entrances from different sides and kind of, you know, be part of the audience that way. That was really neat. Um, And we did that very, very early on. And I remember wanting to go back and add stuff to it and do it again and, you know, be able to build on the performances that we had done because I thought, oh, I would do this and add this now. But that show ran for a really, really long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was wonderful. I And I only got to really go and see it once. Um, uh. But it was exciting when we got to, you know, got to you know, be a part of it when we were initially putting it together, but then to go back and see it later was very cool when we were at Universal. I'm sure it felt strange too. Like, wait a minute, that's my voice. What is going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah. Great. Yes. It must have felt strange. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it is kind of strange when you're sitting there in the audience and you're, you know, it's like, my lips aren't moving. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear I myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that attraction was 
was running for like like 25 years 25 oh, years crazy. like wow yeah wow. and it was it was it didn't really change as much it was just all the same mm-hmm. yeah which, you is, know. which is cool yeah you had yeah. kept having younger kids come through you know who had never seen barney before so it was brand new to them yeah. but yeah it did go on and it was very very classic beginning barney kind of thing um oh, yeah and yeah. i don't know when it shut down, but it hasn't been that many years ago. I no, was it was yeah, I think it shut down only three, maybe two years, or three ago. years ago. Yeah, yeah. three years ago, something like that. Did all of you get the opportunity to see it? No, sadly, no, yeah. no. I've seen we video. Didn't. I've seen plenty of videos of it, though. Oh yeah, we we've does. seen plenty of video, but in person we did not. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. unfortunately, yes. we wish we we wish we did, but yeah. I know. Sadly, yeah. no. Sadly, no. I'm glad there's video of it. That's, oh, yeah. that's me, good. Too. me too. Well, you know, there's new stuff that sounds like it's going to be coming out too, possibly. I mean, right. I keep hearing rumors that um, there might be another film in the works or something like that. That's but, what I've heard too. Yeah. But so far as I know, it's just kind of floating around out there in the ether. I don't know what's actually developing with any of it. So, right. Fingers yeah. crossed. Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and it's really interesting about the you know, the grand opening of that attraction. I, you know, you and the, everyone else were there for that. Right? Three, and then you know, and, and then and then I know like you and the others were like, "Oh my gosh, bar attraction is is, is there!" Whoa. And it was very exciting to be able oh, to yeah. have a you know be part of a of an attraction at uh, an amusement park whoever oh, yeah. would have thought you know when you think about your career and things that are possible <laughs> that is one that didn't hadn't ever really occurred to me and there was another thing that we did that was very interesting kids with character oh kids for character yeah yes, yes. Kids for yes. Character. That's i right. love kids I for forgot. character yes. yes that was well, a lot yes, of fun yes, too yes, Oh, we had yeah. some wonderful people because it was sort of a coming together of a lot of different children's characters. Oh, yeah. yes. And to be able to see people from all the different shows and different venues, that was really wonderful to be a part of that too. Oh, yeah. It had the same kind of feel. You know, it was sort of different than anything I'd done before and um, live also, you know, something that was live. And um there was uh, Tom Selleck was there too. I remember meeting him and and his wife was there. So there were a lot of different people from a lot of different venues that that were part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. I know you shut off a few earlier, but what was it like, kind of uh, voicing BJ for the Barney merch in the in the games? That was very cool, um, and it was you know I was glad that I had the experience I had in studio from when I'd done commercials and things like that, because some of it was very exacting. With the toys, you had to be very careful about pronunciation and making sure you got all your T's and your consonants and everything um, in there because the toy could distort things sometimes a little bit. So you had to make sure that you had a really clean sound going in so that the toy would be very easily understood and that if there was anything that happened in the development or in the process of actually getting the voice from the recording into the toy, you didn't want the quality to diminish. So that had to be very exacting, especially like on the counting uh, toys and singing toys and things like that. But that was fun and it was really fun. I remember at the time, my nieces and nephews were young and I would give them Barney toys for Christmas and that kind of thing. And I had uh-huh. a, a nephew who's a tough guy, you know, and everything, but he would take that Barney doll to a uh, BJ doll to bed and, you know, listen to the counting at night. So it was, Aww. it was very endearing to me that, um, that he loved that so much. And I know the other kids did too, but I was glad that I was able to kind of bring that into their childhood. I childhoods. I have, um, lots of nieces and nephews and several of them who were right at that perfect age for Barney about the time that I was doing Barney. So that was very neat. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yes. And some of them still have those toys and they're in their forties now. <laughs> oh. That's crazy. Wow. Oh, that's <laughs> they, get, they passed them on to their kids. So that's pretty. Oh, awesome. that's wonderful. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. So, but it, Barney does go on. I love seeing that. Mm-hmm. And I love that, you know, he's still out there, that you guys are still creating interest for it. And um, that the episodes, I still see them on YouTube. I know that there are some different streaming uh, channels that Barney is still on and kids are still loving him. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Oh, I felt so honored to be able to do the voice of BJ. I mean, it was just wonderful to be a part of kids' lives that way. And so much fun because he's a little boy, you know, and to be able to bring that playful side of myself out and that more raucous side and also have Jeff and then Kyle be able to help, you know, express that and develop it and have him be a character that a lot of little boys I think could identify with and show the relationship between he and baby Bob and kind of explore that sibling thing. It was just really an honor to be able to do that. Yeah. And fun. Mm -hmm. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Here's Kyle. Hey, Patty. Uh, hey, Kyle. I'm in uh, Kyle Nelson Center. Nelson has joined us, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Third time on the show. Third time. Yeah. First, first, third time. You're the first one, Kyle. You're the first one to first join, one join us three times. three times. Wow. That's Aww. awesome. These yeah. guys love you. Yes. Yes, yes. we do. <laughs> awesome. For those, for those oh, yeah. who don't I mean, I mean, that's one of our first ever yeah, guests. One, of, one of our very first guests. For those who don't know, Kyle was the body performer Beach. From 1997 to 2009, the big surprise tour uh, of the show, season seven, big 14. surprise tour, and then just took amazing. over for you know on the series for many years after that. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. How, you, how you doing, Kyle? Kyle? It's been good. I'm good. How are you guys? Doing good. Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Thank you. Thank it's you. great I'm to glad see you're your face. Here. Likewise, likewise. I'm <laughs> I'm here. I'm here in a sensory room at my school. We just got out. Um, school ended and just uh, yeah just eager to what age are you teaching Kyle this this year I'm with fifth and sixth grade students that's my favorite Mm. when I used to teach acting the fifth graders third through fifth graders were my favorites yeah that's awesome they're 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 still young sponges very impressionable but at that age that like they they want to build that level of independence and 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 be more trendy and such so it's it's fun to see and some of the students i work with i had when they were in preschool so yeah it's 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 pretty fun oh that's great i love it that age too their personalities really start to develop and shine and you know they know who they are and their senses of humor yes yeah, it's, it's 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 a little more challenging now as opposed to when at in preschool I could just pick them up and then move them if 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 we were having some issues. But now I can't I can't physically I can't move them. I got I got to verbally redirect them. <laughs> Always a good skill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Great to have you here, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I got to verbally you, redirect bro. Kyle a lot from inside his head. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she she was she was the voice in my head. That's always <laughs> literally yes. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. what Jeff Ayers used to have a t-shirt that said, I do what the voices in my head tell me to do. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Which when it's Julie Johnson, watch out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh, Kyle! It's so yep. good to see you. We've been telling yes. tales, you know. Of, yes, I was telling course. about uh, being at Universal and how we used to torture you guys while we were sitting by the craft services table. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> as as yes, as comical as that was, it was definitely one of those like. Uh... Yeah, really <laughs> gritty. Time for a Barney body slam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh man. Absolutely. Oh, Favorite yeah. seeing above each other again. It's great. Yes. Oh well, yeah, we, that's a bond that never breaks, right, Kyle? No. Of course. That's yeah, um... we, I, mean, I I think that I reflect so much on just all the times that we would spend in between takes and just trying trying to think of different one liners 
<laughs> or, or how, how can we how can we extend I mean the the lesson or, or not the lesson the the the, the scene in a sense of like what, what was in front of us and the materials. Yes. And, and, just add to and play off of each other. Yes. Yeah. That yeah, was the that... thing with Kyle. I had to keep up with him. Right. Especially <laughs> when it had something, when we were doing a musical number yes. or anything high <laughs> energy, I'm like, I, I you know, I'm trying to anticipate. <laughs> now Kyle has to keep it up. Because yeah. there was no telling. For the, yeah, we, you know, it, in terms of ad libs and improvisations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was like always. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like whatever what happened with you know, BJ, like how you, like BJ has to keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Kyle has a very youthful energy. So I had to be on oh, my yeah. toes. Because I'm a few years yeah. older than Kyle. <laughs> well, I, I, Time has aged me too now. But, oh, so. well, not much. It's been kind. I'd say it's been kind. Yeah. Well, you, have, the, the, you have a grandchild key. now. Is that true? Have It's so fun. We were sitting here reminiscing about you and about Carrie. Yes. And, you know, just a different, uh, about going to Universal <laughs> and some of the different things we did. There's just so much, you know, yes. to think about how many years it was. And yeah, it also so I, seems just like yesterday in a lot of ways. Yeah, I just, I, or I, I think too on the moments where I, we would fulfill I, a take and whether we were playing with musical instruments and then I'd get Malcolm or I'd get um, whoever was I, in control of audio to then cue in some Van Halen or some <laughs> <laughs> So, so we could improv yes. like some rock, rock concert while we were. Yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and you can imagine that Julie and I would jump right in with the voices oh, yeah. singing whatever oh, it yes. was. <laughs> I, I can on the water, I remember a few times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 still, I still can't help but reflect on your quote when Carrie was doing the little action sequence of running and jumping into the the inflatable pool <laughs> it's, it's, when they were having to put... baby they're birthing a bouncing baby carry <laughs> <laughs> they were pulling the he went and jumped in a wading pool right yeah. so the suit would get saturated with water and they'd have to pull it off of carry and carry's coming out of the out of the suit and it's like oh yeah. look it's birth of carry <laughs> yeah. the push it's, it's push. a bouncing baby carry. <laughs> it's a bouncing baby carry. Oh, man. That was above and beyond the call of duty for him. Yeah. I mean, he I don't know how many times he jumped into that pool, got soaking wet, and oh, they'd yeah. have to pull him, that soaking wet heavy costume off. It's like get him out of there before he drowns. <clears throat> but yeah. That was a fun one. Yeah. I just, I was telling these guys, Kyle, that you guys are always the ones who work the hardest. I remember seeing them on break, you know, when they would pull those costumes off of them. And these guys are just like, just soaking. But I don't I, know. How it, I mean, the, 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 pur I mean, the purpose of what we were trying to fulfill, I just kind of kept us in the right spirit. Yes. And I think that, I am. It's kind of definitely one of those mind over matter type situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the extent that we reason to understand our limits, but I think that we each motivated and pushed each other enough to like make sure that we I, we did it right. And 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 granted, I mean, there's always the the element of human error or or technical difficulty of sort that I mean, just, I mean, it came with the territory. But I think for most part, I. Mean, I mean, we, we got it done in reasonable time within sufficient takes outside of when Fred would be filming and he'd need to get like all 98 different angles and, and, and be like, We used really? to tease and be like, oh, because Fred was a perfectionist and would shoot yes, a lot of takes. And we're like, okay, now let's get one of everybody's feet. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Fred. He's great. Yes, yeah. Yeah, he is. He's a joy. And boy, yeah. he's got stories to tell. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and he I know, did. And I know, really Jake, did. you kind of had a kind of like deep cut question to ask before we kind of wrap up here. Oh, yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. So, so now, of course, if you remember, so which I can I can't allow to say it because I remember Bob uh, Bob West he actually um like show it on one of his previous Facebook lives where basically it was a diagnose the kids and you and Julie and Cheryl were, were, like, were playing at the baseball field which is when BJ was kind of was still like new uh-huh I think that was the intro didn't they do a, the introduction to BJ um that it was a base it's something, it's yes. something like, for, for I, a like a little charity event or something was this for, at for, a like ball for their, field yeah, yeah. okay uh-huh. <clears throat> what it might so. have been we went to yankee stadium and oh, actually yeah, was, shot okay. something there that we julie and bob and i were up in the stands and they shot stuff down on the field oh wow yeah, that was amazing too. I mean, yeah, it's so ama- amazing you brought that up because I forget there's so many things that I had forgotten we even did that. That was a fun right. day. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember Jim Rowley gave me a hat, uh, like a baseball kind of pinstriped hat uh, with a logo of BJ on the front. And he had explained to me that these were hats that were given out to everyone at at the time in which BJ was introduced, mm-hmm. and I think it was at a ball field. Yes, very cool. And they had jerseys yeah. and stuff too. Yeah, there. Yeah, that was very cool. Oh, you guys have triggered some great memories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah they, <laughs> sometimes when they bring up stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> oh, there have been times when I've like watched a clip of something on YouTube, and I have no remembrance of shooting it i know that's my voice <laughs> but yeah. with all those episodes and go you know so many yeah. takes of so many things there were hundreds, i'll watch something and go, hundreds of them oh yeah but... did i do that okay I, must have. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to talk about um galaxy con real quick so i know you julia and bob actually did like mean some barney fans through there so what was that like well i actually it? only did virtual galaxy yeah, con right. virtual yeah right. um, bob yeah. has done the live ones it was really fun because we got to talk to people for a few minutes and then you know do a picture with them or whatever and reminisce about what some of their favorite episodes were or we'd even do sing-alongs and things sometimes but there are some great people out there who barney had been such a huge part of their childhood there was one guy who told us that watching the show as a kid was responsible for him wanting to um, have a career in the arts. And he was a a theater teacher. And so he came on and just visited with us for a while and talked about his job and how he loved it and how Barney had been such a big influence on him growing up. That's great. Awesome. Wonderful. That's wonderful. And and so the last question that uh, Jake's about to ask is a question we ask all of our guests. At the end, we asked it to Kyle, and now uh, we'll ask it to you. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, she asks every guest. So, um, so of course, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? In your own words, how would you define the word nostalgia? Warm, fuzzy feelings about things that have happened in your past. Yeah. In your past or in the past of you know, the culture just that have become part of your past. That's it. Words, then, yes. 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 Well, Patty, uh, keep in touch, uh, Patty and Kyle. Yes. This is great. I'll let you both know when this uh, interview goes up. Yes. 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 Thank you again, Patty, for being here. And thanks again, Kyle, for being up in for the third time for, for being part of this. It means, oh, yeah. it means a lot. This is great. Thank thanks for the surprise. Yes. Oh, enjoy the, enjoy our, the rest of your day, pleasure. you too, and then uh, have a happy holiday season. Yes, yes. happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, likewise. Yes. Thanks, guys. Bye, Patty. Thank you, bye, guys. Kyle. Oh. I'm out. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, and it's goodbye from us as well. Yes, we absolutely enjoyed our time with Patty Wirtz and having previous guest, uh, two-time previous guest, Kyle Nelson, uh, hop in and surprise Patty. You know, obviously they've worked together for, you know, just years and years and years, you know, with Patty voicing BJ and Kyle in uh, the body most of the time. So it was 
great since kind like of 14 and big surprise and everything else that oh, yeah. full circle so, moment yes absolutely absolutely but um, really is. yes we absolutely enjoy our time with the both of them uh keep on yes, the lookout and, for... um, and uh and sorry chris and um uh, and pay's website is in the description down below so you all can oh, check yes. out yes other Her work that, that, that she and that she's also a part of to see what she's doing now and um and, and yeah. yeah and yes um seasons of barney and some of the home videos are streaming on places like tubi and you can find a bunch of them on youtube so if you yep ever want to check out what we grew up with or any of the later stuff, you know, go check that out. Um, keep on the lookout, everyone, for more wonderful interviews coming your way. And as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.